G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab. And today, I've got a small box to unbox. It's something from Voltex. Now, I met the crew at Voltex at the Smart Energy Expo in Sydney a few weeks ago, and they said they'd send me one of their lithium ion batteries. So, let's have a look. Um, it's a nice little box. I wonder if it survived transport. That's always an issue when you have uh, potentially delicate products. So let's have a look inside. So first up, uh, we can see we've got a user manual, right? Sitting on top here, there's the user manual. Uh, we've got some bolts, presumably for the positive and negative terminals, a quality control certificate, and some high density foam. And now we're into the battery. And it's plastic wrapped. So let me just get this out of here. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Now, this is not a dummy. This is the real thing. They actually make a see-through battery. Um, it's so cool to see the interior of a lithium ion battery. Now this is in a form factor that's a conventional 12 volt, like um, automotive uh, battery, but it is lithium ion. And you can see the cells. So there's four cells inside here, each with um, nominal, I'd say 3.2 volts each. Um, they give you the specs right on the side. So it actually says that uh, it's nominal voltage is 12.800 amp hours. Now the difference between a lithium ion battery and say an equivalent lead acid battery is one, you wouldn't be doing that with a lead acid battery. It's heavy, but it's not nearly as heavy as lead acid. So it's much lighter for hundred amp hours. It's also all usable. Well, at least 90% of that capacity is usable compared to a lead acid battery, which you typically might use 50% of it uh, if you're cycling it regularly. So that is pretty cool. But when you turn it around this side, I mean, it looks like some fancy GPU uh, from a gaming computer. It's actually the BMS. This here is the BMS and it's got a lot of sensors. Um, it's got uh, under temperature, over temperature, under voltage, and over voltage protection. All of that uh, inside this unit. So that means you basically can connect to the terminals on top, and there's positive and negative terminals. They've got little um, protectors there. Uh, they come with bolts so that you can use lugs, etc. So there's our there's our bolts. And we could then charge it with a 12 volt source, such as a automotive battery charger, uh, the auxiliary power supply for your recreational vehicle or camper van, and there we go. So you might think, well, so what? There you go, it's a lithium ion battery. But wait, there's more. There's a very, very cool app. Now the app from Voltex uh, actually gives you a whole lot of data. Now, how does it get this communication? It's through Bluetooth. So you don't need any Wi-Fi access at all. You can just basically install the app, download it from the App Store or Play Store. Um, uh, it'll scan your Bluetooth devices that are nearby. It'll find the battery and you press connect and straight away uh, the app pops up with all this info. So let's have a look what we got on here. Um, it's telling us individual cell voltages too. Now each of these cells, oh my gosh, they are absolutely identical, 3.322 to three decimal places of voltage. <laughs> so that's down to two millivolts. They're accurate to within one millivolt basically. So uh, that's a very important thing. So when you've got multiple cells that are connected in series, you don't want to have a lot of voltage difference in them because that can lead to uh, overcharging of some or undercharging of others. So having very closely matched cells. Now, no doubt they match these cells uh, in the factory uh, and they've charged them equally. The BMS also can help with this. It does something called balancing. And so it tells you in the app whether balancing is on or off. So I can see at the moment that uh, there is actually three kind of key pieces of information. Uh, is charging on? No, that doesn't mean it's actually charging. It means that it's got a, a one-way valve, basically probably a FET switch that will let this battery be charged. 
Why would you want such a thing? Because you can turn it off and stop it being charged. Meanwhile, it can still discharge. So it actually can control the direction of current flow uh, to protect the battery. So it can protect it from over voltage by turning off the charge circuit and it can detect, uh, protect it from under voltage by turning off the discharge. And it also has information here about whether it's in the balancing phase. Now that's usually achieved, most lithium ion battery BMSs do top balancing. That means when the battery is nearly fully charged, there's a, a one cell will get to its target voltage ever so slightly before another, and therefore it will uh, stop charging that cell and charge the, the remnants, or it will bypass it. So that balancing process is to make sure that all the cells have exactly the same target voltage each cycle, each full cycle. So at the moment, there's no balancing because I'm not charging the batteries at all. It tells me how many cycles it's done. Well, this has done two cycles. So I guess they do some testing uh, in the factory. So it actually has been cycled uh, through the BMS and it tells me what its temperature is. So it's 17 degrees inside there, and it's about 21 degrees outside here. So there's quite a bit of thermal mass in this battery. So something to be aware of with lithium ion batteries is that though they can be discharged at pretty cold temperatures, you know, some of them down to minus 20, when you recharge them, they generally want to be at warmer temperatures, definitely in the positive range. So putting this out in the snow and trying to charge it, it probably will just sit there waiting for it to warm up. So just be aware of that, that lithium batteries like to be at a more comfortable temperature, typically above zero, sometimes even a bit higher before they'll charge. But here in Australia, that's generally not a problem unless you live in some alpine areas. So. Um, thank you Voltex for sending me this battery. This will be very useful for camping applications. And actually I've got a RV vehicle here and the house battery has only just failed. What do you know? I can see this being a very useful house battery for my RV. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.